This week on Chef on a Mission, I'm at the Royal New Zealand Police College in Paiorua, where I'm cooking a midwinter Christmas feast for 60 new constables. Really looking forward to that tonight. I'm expecting something pretty sharp. I'll be put through my paces and I'll go on the beat. Can I stay on the right side of the law? No, I told you, don't toast the nut. Don't toast them. Or will I cop out? This assignment brings me to the Royal New Zealand Police College, where after 19 weeks of study, 60 recruits will become police constables. My mission is to prepare a midwinter Christmas feast as part of the graduation celebrations. And I can tell you, it's a bit chilly, so I'm sure it's going to go down a treat. I wonder what they've got planned for me. The group of recruits I'm cooking for have undergone a rigorous five-month training program. They've learned police vehicle use, firearms training, forensic techniques, negotiation, cultural awareness. Today I'm going to face some of the same tests the recruits have been through. I'm about to learn some defensive training techniques and I'm hoping that I'm not going to need any of them to fend off any unhappy customers. God help me. Simon? I've got no idea what instructors Gareth and Andrea have in mind for me. Am I nervous? You could say that. This is the duty belt you're going to use for the activities that we've got planned for you. Pop that around your waist and flip it on. And make it big enough. Lesson one, personal competency. All right, just bring your hands back towards me, thanks. Where I'll learn how to handcuff an offender. All right, good. Stand still. All right, give me your other hand. OK. So that's how we get those cuffs on. Looks like it's my turn. OK, you're under arrest. Can you turn around, please? Put your arms apart. I'm going to be stepping forward and handcuffing you. Oh. Oh. Lesson two, how to use a baton to deal with a threat. And all I want you to do is try and get that baton out and up to your shoulder as quick as you can. Citizens, Go. fear not. Quick draw gold is on the case. Instead of using it in a short form here, Seriously, how hard can it be? Real fast. Hold it. Yep. There you go. That's how I feel after a hard night at Euro. Luckily, relief is at hand. Defence tactics, I really enjoyed those classes. They were a challenge at times, um, definitely put into situations that you know you're going to get into when you're actually out working. Lesson three. Gareth. Helping the police. What do you want? With their inquiries. What do you want? We're going to arrest a man who's assaulted his wife and it's my job to cover for my partner. Just stay back where you are. What are you going to do, eh? Because... Face it, face it. Get him off. Looks like I've got to watch my partner's back. Don't worry, buddy, I've got this sorted. Stay down. Stay down or we'll hit again. Stay down. All right. Move over, Starsky and Hutch. Right. But I can't okay. imagine dealing with such dangerous situations in real life. He's a stroppy bugger. He's got potential. Right, so he was, uh, you could see that he just, he wanted to get in there, which is good, they've got to be able to do that. That was good, that was good. If I got him for the, for the 19 weeks, yeah, I could send you back a police officer. Looks like I passed my first challenge and maybe picked up one or two techniques for dealing with stroppy customers. Move! You think Gareth is scared of meeting me in a dark alleyway? I think not. And I also think I'm not made out to be a cop. But I am going to go and find the kitchen and see what sort of food they're serving up. After hard physical activity like that, these recruits need to be very well fed. The quality of the food overall is fantastic. You think about the numbers the guys have to cater for. Um, we always get variety. Yeah, they do an awesome job, they really do. Executive chef Conrad Stegerwald and his team of seven cooks do fantastic work, cooking up to 1,200 meals a day. Chef Conrad, how many are you cooking for a week at the police college? We cook an average between three and 400 people, three times a day. How much do these guys eat a day? As much as they can stack on the plate. Thanks. Is there any advice you can give me for the dinner that I'm going to cook them? Lots of protein, starch, lots of gravy and they're happy. What we're saying is meat, veg and gravy. Yep. Lunch looks great, so I'm keen to find out how it tastes. 
what you see so far looks absolutely fantastic. What do you guys love about the food here or hate about the food here? Um, I just think it's good you get a variety. So they are catering for you know uh, everyone's diets and appetites. What it's are good. your favourite things? Um, Wedgie Wednesday. Yeah, Wedgie Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Unlimited wedges, pies. Hot dogs, all the, all the bad stuff really. Probably the naughtiest meal that we get, and so it's pretty much the favourite for everyone for the week. You don't feel like you have to have salad with Wedgie Wednesday. You could just have a big pile of wedges and that's it. Sounds like they love a good fry-up, so I'm not sure how my menu will go down. So after five months, do you, you get sick of all the food? or uh, It can get a little bit repetitive, but uh, it's not too bad. Yeah. Don't miss mum's cooking? Oh, I always miss mum's cooking. Yeah, it's always the best day. Yeah, mate. Hey, uh, what is it, sorry? Uh, it's an onion beef. Yep. And that one's just basically a quiche. It's a ham and mushroom. Uh, ham and mushroom quiche yeah. looks great. Thank you very much. No it looks like I better get my tomato sauce right now if I'm having some. Great looking cold meats, curried eggs, penne pasta salad. Beautiful. Now's my chance to get to know my dinner guests a bit better. How you doing, guys? It's all pretty quiet here. Yeah. Everybody's pretty hungry, eh? Mm -hmm. Time to get to reflect on the day. There's only a couple more to go, isn't there? Yeah. Two days to go. Do you know you've passed? Um, no, we're still waiting on some results. And then start work when on Monday, is it? Or Get a good week off after we've right. finished here. And then, yeah, hit the ground run in and... It's all on. Work, yeah, almost. Because yeah. I, I think most people think, oh, to be a police man or woman, then you've got to be physically pretty strong. Is that really the case, do you think? Some of the strongest people in the wing are not the people that can bench 100 kgs, they're the people that can keep their heads and talk to people. I remember as a kid being told off by a policeman once, and man, I never did it again. There was nothing bad, by the way, I'm not going to tell you. So Cameron's polished the plate up, completely clean. You're obviously a fan of Chef's food here. Yeah, no, it goes good. You don't like onions. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today. You clearly like the soup because you had soup, soup to start. Yeah, Two course good. lunch. Yeah. Didn't finish your rice. Close. It's Not like you. <laughs> <laughs> I've just had my first lunch at the police college with all the guys. Great bunch of people. The food's fresh. It's tasty. It's well seasoned. There's clearly a few things on the menu they're not so keen on, but. On the whole, I get a feeling that they really do enjoy the food here. I'm really looking forward to bringing my 5% magic to the table and giving them a midwinter feast they won't forget. I'm at the Royal New Zealand Police College to cook their newest graduates a midwinter feast. I'm also learning about their training. So this afternoon, I'm in for some high octane excitement. I've made it to the big time. I'm gonna drive a police car for real. I think I'm an okay driver, but these guys take it to a whole new level and they're going to teach me skid control. Right, my first time driving a police car. Straight ahead. And turn sharp. Yeah, fix the problem, you've got to understeer. You feel it? Yeah. This has got to be every guy's dream. Behind the wheel of a police car with the hammer down. Catch. And Chris, the instructor's a brave man. Feel that one? Yeah, what, did that one right. what did you have? An oversteer? A bit of understeer? A bit of a mix? Turn it again. Accelerate. Off the power now. Off it. And. My driving may not be as good as my cooking. Takes a little concentration. But in a high-speed chase, I might just make the grade. There's just one thing missing. Can we do a lap with the sirens going? Okay. Turn one click. OK, now we've got lights going. We're in pursuit. That's what I'm talking about. Make sure that that doesn't drive your drill on too much. Now I feel like a real policeman. I've had the siren going, the lights going, racing around the track. All I need to do now is issue you a ticket, young man. Recruits face all sorts of skill tests, and for my next challenge, I'm literally being thrown in the deep end. I'm not quite sure this next activity is quite my thing. I wasn't exactly the captain of the swimming team at school, but hey, I'm going to give anything a go today. Hey, Gareth. Hey, Simon. I'd like to say it's nice to see you, but I'm not sure it is. <laughs> you're going to love me soon, then. Just chuck that on, and then when you're back, we're in the pool. Okay. All right. See you in a minute.
we're going to run them through the basic swim test, the entry standard test that all recruits have to do. And this is me, dressed for the occasion. It doesn't feel like I'm the sort of thing I would normally go for a swim in. <laughs> Off we go. The first part of the test is to swim 50 metres in under a minute. Wearing the uniform makes quite a difference. It adds a lot of drag to the body, the water, so trying to swim down is very difficult. How are you doing? You OK? All right, and back we go. That's a good swimming style. It's doing well. Five, six metres to go. And here we go. That's good. We're nearly there. And touch. And I've made it with seconds to spare. Yeah. Awesome job. That was a good swim. All right. See how we go for the next test. That's a brick. It's now three metres underwater, and it's my job to rescue it. So what I want you to do is just duck dive straight down. But this pool is deeper than I thought. That's OK. You weren't far from it. How are you feeling? You OK? Uh, one more go, eh? One more. We get a lot of people coming through here, and things thing to remember is they've trained for six months, some of them up to a year, to be able to pass this test. They come in, they're physically fit, they're rearing to go, keen as, and then even some of them still struggle to do this. It pisses me off. It's good to see you keen, but I'd much prefer you be able to cook me a nice meal tomorrow night than worry about having to get that. I'm not giving up that easily. I'll get that brick back to dry land if it kills me. Excellent, all right. Awesome job. All right, keep that brick attached to your chest. Kick your way back across to that side of the pool. Nice job. Yeah, Any bricks falling in pools can rest easy when I'm around. OK, how was that? Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Hey, survived, which is a key thing. I'm much rather be in the kitchen right now, but at least I got that bloody brick. All right, then. Thanks, mate. Good work. That was an awesome job. Thanks. If you're on the side of the river sinking or you're in a pool drowning, you do not want to see me wearing this because you've got no show of being saved. Those recruits have got it cut out for them. I take my hat off to them. They're fantastic. But right now, I'm going to go and dry off in the kitchen. After all that activity, I really worked up an appetite. Thank goodness it's dinner time. Fucking good. How you doing? Evening. Good, how are you? I've gained a lot of respect for these recruits, so when it's my turn to cook, I want to give them something special. So in a couple of days' time, I'm going to cook you guys dinner. So give me some feedback, what you love, what you don't like. Chicken? Yeah. You like chicken? Yeah. What about if I do like half chicken for everybody, make a really great stuffing that's a little bit different on a wicked mash? Yeah. Oh, Sounds really good. Sauce. Yeah. What about oh. desserts? Why do I like a, a DI pie, you know? Like make a pie on Detective Inspector, because that's probably what all you need to be at some stage, right? Put ice cream with it. I'll just stop eating now and wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had lunch, I've had dinner. I've tasted flavoursome food, but right now I've got to forget about that because my day as a recruit is not over. I've got to head into Wellington Central. I'm going out on the beat for real tonight. Bring it on. 7 p.m. and I'm heading for the mean streets of downtown Wellington. Tonight I'm riding along on a frontline patrol in a police car, the real deal. Hopefully I get to see what it's really like on the streets at night. G'day, Junior. Simon, how are you? Good to Good, you. Mate. Good, I'm excited. Oh, I'm very excited. Not nervous. There's your coat. Awesome. All right, eh? Almost feel like half a policeman. There you are, policeman tonight. And it doesn't take us long to see some action. This is the real thing. Uh, there's been an incident at Four Corporate on uh, yeah, Shell it, it, Station. Sounds like there's a golf club, there's a weapon, and uh, there's possibly three people involved. Kids! We well, can't find the victim. Yeah. Don't know who's involved, so Another we've got one person who's been arrested for obstruction. Yeah. So um, we're just going to do some more area patrols, see if we can find a victim. Someone's been hit with a golf club. It sounds like one person is being arrested. They're now going up to a house up the road. This is uh, going to be pretty interesting. Look, we're just investigating an assault down the road about half an hour ago. 
For me, this is a scary glimpse into what police have to deal with any night of the week, and right now, I'm glad I chose cooking as a career. Excuse me. We're involved in what's happening tonight. Yes. So quite clearly, there are two guys in the garage downstairs. Yep. But because you don't have a warrant, you can't get in to find out, right? Uh, at this stage, yeah. Our next call out is to a suburban apartment building where an elderly resident is in distress. We are, ma'am, we are from the police. Can you open the door for me, please? Joanna? Joanna! Thank you. It's all right, ma'am. It's all right. It's okay. It's all right. This woman is disorientated, lonely, and causing trouble, and the officers are here to help. We'll look after you. That's what we're here for. So they're going to take her down to the police station and see if they can ascertain really what the problem is. But the neighbours have been complaining because she's been throwing things out the window at people. Right, down you go. That's all right, you can light your, way, light your way down. That's it. I guess I'm now the bag carrier. Now I'm getting a sense of what's ahead for the recruits. From fighting crime to helping little old ladies, tonight's been a real eye-opener. And these guys have been like true gentlemen. They couldn't have done a better job. That's our police force doing a completely different side. And uh, I'm, I'm totally impressed. It blows me away with how they deal with, you know, the rough guys through to, you know, an old lady who's obviously struggling with, uh, with age. Well, this is my bed for the night in the barracks. I've had a truly amazing day. You know, the finale getting out in the police car was incredible, eye-opening, frightening, exciting. And the whole day, eating with all the recruits, fantastic food. So, man, I'm going to have to be on the money for my midwinter Christmas feast. But right now, absolutely knackered. I've got a huge day tomorrow again. I've got to get out and find all the produce from the whole area. So it's uh, bon oui, or as they say, good night. Day two, and I'm heading up the coast from the police college in search of local produce. The Capri Coast is just 40 minutes north of Wellington. There's some dramatic views. It's really quite wild around here, and I quite like it. But right now, I've got to hit the ground running. I'm looking for ingredients for my midwinter Christmas feast. And you guessed it, I'm looking for some great cheese and a few other goodies. I'm here at the Capiti Cheese Factory and I'm looking for some bocconcini mozzarella to use on my mashed potato to give it that extra 5% magic I'm looking for. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to find it right in here. Capiti is one of this country's premier cheese makers, so this place is a cheese lover's paradise. If only you could smell this room, it just smells like you want to eat it. And Andrew is giving me a crash course in making bocconcini. This is how it starts off. Okay, it comes in as a, as a milk product like this, so it's all liquid. Yeah. And then it gets turned into the curd. Have a taste of that. Sweet, eh? Yeah, really sweet. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, eh? Man, I can imagine that just on a plate. I know. Drizzled with a little bit of honey. Yep. You're away laughing. <laughs> I know. As you can see, the bocconcini is running in the bunnet. So bocconcini just being small mouthfuls. Yep. Yep. And so basically, it's mozzarella, but it's a baby one. Exactly. It's a small Mini. mouthful size. Small mouthful, exactly. That's yes, what exactly. a bocconcini yep. is. It is, yeah. You see, straight away, we've got that shine. So I'm push it up in there. This will be ideal for my menu. Now, I've got to do a dinner up at the Royal New Zealand Police College. Mm -hmm. What's the chance of me getting a whole bunch of this bock and chini that I can then actually put into my mashed potato so it melts in there yep. in pieces? Yep. And I get that stringiness with a mash? Yeah, no problem. We could sort something out for you. Jesus be praised. Now for my veg. There's nothing like a roadside vegetable shop. I need apples, I need onions, I need a whole bunch of veggies. And this place looks like it could supply them all. Now that's what I want, some new season New Zealand garlic to go with my croutons. I'm going to need some limes to flavour up my sauce for the very first course that I'm going to give them. 
and it's good looking celery. I'll use those in my stuffing, which is going to go in the chicken. I'm doing a big midwinter Christmas dinner up at the Royal New Zealand Police College. Okay. So I need your best potato for mashed potato. And I'm also going to do them a DI apple pie, you know? <laughs> so I want really good apples. You can go ahead and pick some fresh apples in the orchard. Awesome. These are your Granny Smith. You're recommending these for stewing? I'd say this would be your best bet for a cooking apple, yep. Nothing better than straight off the tree. Mm. Perfect. Not sour or tart at all. Hey, Paul, we only need 20 kg, so do you think we're about there? Well, that's about it. Awesome. I shall be able to make a killer apple pie with those bad boys, but right now I'm in search of capsicums. I'm going to roast these and use them as part of my salsa for the entree. Yay for Penray. I'm sorted for fruit and veggies. My next stop's a chicken farm. I've already got some free-range chickens for my main course. Now I need some free-range farm fresh eggs for my stuffing for the chicken. Am I in the right place to get some free-range eggs? You most certainly are. They're going to let me in then. OK, <laughs> come on through. Woman, heck, how many have we got? And this paddock here is about 2,000, Simon. Are they friendly enough to pick up? Yeah, they should be all right. <laughs> Come on, you're going to be friendly, aren't you? Come on, tell me about laying eggs. This could be an interesting exercise. It's probably not as easy as what uh, you might think. Did it for you, Simon. No, I'm done. Have you laid an egg today? So what's the difference between, you know, a commercial battery egg as opposed to a free-range egg? Happy hens, you know, being stress-free, will basically lay a better food product. So this is where it all happens. Yep. They go into the nest behind the red curtains there for privacy, and they lay their eggs in there. And then the eggs gently roll onto the collection conveyor belt here. So here we have some free-range eggs. I need 12 dozen. Not a problem at all. I've got my cheese, eggs, fruit and veg. On my way back down the coast, I've got time for one last visit at Pai Kokoriki where the fish caravan stops every Tuesday, so I'm in luck. The local say he's got the freshest fish in the region. Let's hope he's got some hard pocker for me. G'day, mate. G'day, mate. How are you doing, all right? Good. I'm after some hard pocker. Absolutely, mate. These babies look pretty fresh, They do they? indeed, mate. Can I come round and have a look? Absolutely, off? mate. Yep, it's the one. Right. Wow, they're good-looking fish, huh? Beauty. That is a beauty. Solve. I need a few of them though. We've got three for you. How's that? Take the lot. You happy with that? Awesome. Wellington's really come up trumps for me. I've got all the produce I need for my midwinter Christmas feast. Beautiful fresh harpooka, beautiful apples, vegetables, free range eggs, fantastic cheese from Capity. I'm all set. Sun's going down. I've got a little way to go before I get back to the police college. I want to get an early night because the graduation is not the only thing I want these recruits to remember tomorrow. I need them to remember the midwinter Christmas feast for a long time to come. So I've got four courses to do. Bring it on. Day three at the police college and it's all on. After 19 intense weeks training, 60 recruits are about to become police officers. I've thought about being a policeman for a bit, probably the last 10 years. Yeah, I've always wanted to be part of the community and help the community, so yeah, policing was a, a good way to go. Last 19 weeks have been pretty tough. Just the workload, the pressure on passing, it's just a bit scary learning something new, especially if we're the ones running to the trouble and everyone's running away from the trouble. Today is the big day for the recruits. They're graduating, and I'm cooking a midwinter Christmas feast. Four courses, there's 60 of them. I need to deliver 5% magic to their table for a night they'll never forget. I've got a great kitchen, a great team, and I need to get on with it. 
Because this is such a big job, I'm bringing in some of my Shed 5 staff to help the police college cooks. These guys are big eaters, right? They're recruits, they work hard, they eat a lot. I've seen mountains of food on the plate. Conrad being the executive chef yeah, here, yeah, lots of food, right? So there's lots of work to be done. We've got our dinner up on the table at 6 o'clock. So it's important that we really hustle the whole day, yeah? Let's be organised for tonight, let's go into service, ready to rock and roll, not behind the eight ball, yeah? yeah. All right, guys, let's have a good day. The menu for my midwinter feast comprises a smoked salmon salad, harpoka wrapped in prosciutto, roast chicken and mash, and apple pie and ice cream to finish. But I'm running it past a police college veteran to make sure I'm on the right track. Dennis, you've been here, what, 20 years now? Yeah, 20 years. 20 years at the police college, but you used to be a butcher? Yeah, yeah, I was a butcher for 14 years. They like the food, they eat a hell of a lot, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, their physical stuff, they've got to do their training, so they burn up a fair bit of calories and what have you, you know. Let's hope I get it right. Yeah, mate. Awesome. No pressure, eh? No pressure. <laughs> I think Simon's menu sounds really good. It's their graduation. Big time of their life, you know? First up, I'm going to prep my chicken. What I'm doing now is I'm getting the whole chicken into the soak that I've made up. That's going to have them just that little bit more moist and tender when they're cooked. Meanwhile, Chef Conrad is all over the pastry for the mini apple pies. What do you reckon? Yeah, 180 degrees. I would say 180 degrees. Yeah. And for the filling, there's 20 kilos of apples to peel and core. So just leave that there. You've got the apple, the sugar in there. Jump back on here, start coring the apples. The plan is to put the apple right in the middle of the pastry. So I think we'll actually take that out a little bit. So it's kind of a bit like a volivol, yep. but it's a lid. And then when we put the ice cream in there and the apple brose, it'll all melt into it. Awesome. Thanks, Chef. It was fun. I've got Richie from Shed 5 in Wellington on the case, filleting the salmon and harpooka. So, Richie, what I'm going to be doing is wanting little pieces that are going to just rest down in here after we've cooked them. So we're going to need little pieces like that that are just going to fit perfectly in there. I need sort of like 80. Oh. Smells nice. He's hoping. <laughs> now my chooks have had a good soak, it's time to spice them up a bit. So we've got some rub that I've made up here. So I like to get the rub in under the skin as well. I see. And that will start to work in there and flavour this chicken meat up. Then we're going to roast the chicken and everybody's going to get half roast chicken. Oh, they'll be stoked with that. There's 30 of these babies we've got to get done. How's that, Chef? Is there enough on there? Looks great. Cool. Not only are we cooking dinner here, there's a whole kitchen operating here, which is cooking breakfast, lunch and dinner all day. For everybody, there's also probably 300 other people getting fed on top of our 60. So this is a true working kitchen doing about 400 people for dinner tonight. Out in the dining room, it's lunchtime, and the recruits are all trying to figure out what's on my menu tonight. A nice lasagna, I think. That's what I like. I'm expecting something pretty sharp. The steak's always good. I've seen a lot of the stuff that uh, Simon's done on the TV, and so after doing all the time here, to be able to have something of that standard, really looking forward to that tonight. It should be brilliant. And right now, it's time to cook some potatoes. Clearly, you need a driver's license for one of these machines. Help! Help! <laughs> Help, yeah. Just close the door, and it starts automatically. Oh, I want one of these for home. Next up, de-seeding 10 kilos of capsicums. Just cut these in half and we'll get all the seeds out. I worked in a place in the UK and they used, the chef used to charge us one pound for every seed that he found in the roasted peppers after they were roasted. So you learn fast. OK, so I'm going to be wealthy. There's one, two, three, four pounds. What's that in New Zealand dollars? <laughs> Too much. <laughs> They're into the oven for 30 minutes so I can move on to my match. Everybody loves a cheesy mashed potato, right? And especially mozzarella that stretches and, you know, has that wonderful melting cheese. So by smoking it, cold smoking, we're going to give it that beautiful, cheesy, slightly smoky-flavoured mashed potato to go with our chicken. And we're smoking the cheese over ice so it doesn't run away on us. We're in the calm before the storm at the moment. We've got just over three hours to go before we're actually serving. Pablo's working on the stuffing for the chicken. 
Matt's working on the smoked mozzarella and then the mashed potato, and I'm working on the salsa to go with the hapuka. I've got my roasted peppers in here, fine ripened tomatoes, olive oil, oregano, basil, salt, pepper, touch of garlic, and prolabado white balsamo. Yeah. So Matt, just have a taste here, and we should be able to detect that subtle smoke flavour. Still cold, hasn't melted. By the time we fold that through our hot mashed potato and it starts to melt, it'll be a little smoky surprise on the mash. Yum. Richie's done a great job on the fish fillet, so now they're ready to roll. What I'm going to do here, I've got some serrano ham, and we're just going to roll the fish in there. The saltiness from the serrano will get into the fish, so I don't need to season it. It's a pretty big piece of fish, because I know these guys are big eaters. I love it when a plan comes together, but you know what? A plan can fall apart pretty quick, too. Me and my big mouth. Just when it looks like we're on top of things, sake. someone goes and drops a bomb on us. I can't believe that. We've just found out that the guests are not arriving at 6. They're actually arriving at 5 o'clock. So it's nothing like just a little pressure to go on. And uh, they've only got one hour, and they've got four courses. So it's going to be a uh, tall order to get four courses out in one hour. There's no choice. We've got to go like the clappers and hope for the best. OK, guys, we've got one hour to go. Matt, I really need that done. Then I need chives chopped. Then we'll be on, I'll be on to the fish. Yeah, that's looking good. Keep going just a little bit more. Pick two up at a time, Matt. You and must... right now, I'm starting to regret my fiddly presentation ideas. What I'm doing is the heat from the iron heats the glue up on the underside of the lid so it sticks onto the glass. And then I'm going to write 10 3 on here, which in police terms means they're ready and available for action. And now that these guys are just graduated and now full policemen, they're ready. So it's 10 3. The recruits are ready, all right. Over in the college auditorium, they're assembling for the first of their graduation ceremonies. This is the largest milestone that you can take in your training to become constables. For the majority of you, this has been a long and at times difficult journey. Can I say to you, I've been very impressed with the dedication and hard work that you've put into getting to this point. In here, we have fig and manuka honey ice cream. My recipe. It is good, and I'm hoping the recruits are going to love it. I will, to the best of my power, keep the peace and prevent offences against the peace. At the attestation, uh, the, the recruits are formally uh, sworn into the uh, New Zealand Police. Wayne Frederick Cooks. So they, they walk into the room as uh, recruits after 19 and a half weeks, uh, and then they walk out as police constables. I do. I do. I do. This is our sage and manchego cheese stuffing. Try that and see what you think. Nice. Good? Yeah. I taste good stuffing once I get some of the juices of the chicken over. It's going to be really good. It's a pretty big moment for us all. It's been a long, hard 19 weeks. We're our police constables. <laughs> it's been tough, but all worth it. So please feel free to change your recipe. It looks simple too. It was great to have to take our recruit badges off and get the, the new badges on. It's a good feeling today. It's a good feeling. Thanks very much. Congratulations again. So 60 new constables are ready for action. The question is, are we? Just going to check the cutlery in here to make sure that all the right cutlery is set. We're missing chopsticks here, which they need to have chopsticks set on the right-hand side. Other than that, it all looks good. I've got just on 45 minutes before they're seated. And then I've got them in the dining room for an hour, and I've got 200-odd plates of food that have got to go out in a rush. The pressure's on, and I need to make sure my whole crew is on the right track. Hey, don't muck around with that. Get all the apple brose stuff out. The liquid honey, the oats, we're not going to toast them. Half an hour to go, guys. But it seems some of my instructions haven't hit the mark, and silly mistakes are creeping in. No, I told you, don't toast the... No, don't toast them. Don't get them out, get them out. And we just can't afford any mistakes right now. So I said, don't toast them. But put them in the cream, it's just going to split it. So now's not the time to be doing that.
It's graduation day for the country's 60 newest police officers, and they're expecting way more than coffee and donuts for their dinner. We know Simon's a very good chef, so we're all looking forward to seeing what turns up on our table. In the kitchen, we're getting down to the business end. We've got people in about uh, 15 minutes sitting. <laughs> Here they come, ready or not. OK, we're going on five. Right now, what we're going to do is get the pipettes filled, please. Are you guys OK there? Yes, yeah. yeah, Chef. In here like this, yeah? Stick it down. Right on time, my 60 guests waiting for their midwinter feast. Uh, the dish I'm most looking forward to is probably the roast chicken. That looks really good. I'm a bit of a fan of salmon, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, pudding which is uh, apple pie. I'm not really sure what a lot of it is, to be honest. There's a lot of fancy words in there. But uh, they'll be hard pressed to beat what we normally get. We've got three minutes to go, guys. Girls, do you want to help Pablo here? Once these are on our way, we're getting on to the uh, air organised for the next course, which is the fish. OK, you're out of here, girls. Thank you very much. Wow. You know, we're going to take a little magic to the table with the jars. They're gonna, you know, they won't be expecting to be served their f first course out of a jar, so hopefully that'll get their attention. The horse is bolted, and now we've just got to hang on for the ride. First up, the starter, a hot smoked salmon salad with lime bourbon. <laughs> That's nice. Yum. Yeah. That is nice. I love salmon, so um, definitely was up to my standard. Interesting with the... Syringe stuffing, squeezing it in. Different approach, never seen it before. The salmon was delicious. Um, I'm not quite sure what the other flavours were. The lime beurre blanc just complemented the, um, the salmon very well. It cut the fattiness of the salmon and uh, just made it absolutely outstanding. The, the flavour was, was awesome. And the, um, yeah, that lime and the pepper in the, at the end there, there's just the right amount of pepper, so yeah, it was very, very enjoyable. I don't like fish at all, so I didn't even eat it. The tender base in my tongue, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Fish has gone in. Next, the entree. But the half hook is late into the oven, which has put us behind. Okay. Chef, the salmon's been cleared now, so five minutes. We can't wait any longer. If we don't serve it now, we'll run out of time for dessert. Just perfect, I think. Matt, we're going to need a hand over here. I'm going to go down unless you can get over here and give us a bit of helping hand. This is an orange flavoured balsamic just to give the plate just a little bit of something. So these ones along here can go. Yeah, I'm from uh, the Bay of Islands. We do a lot of fishing and, and yeah, a lot of half hooker up there. And I usually have it in breadcrumbs, so it look, looks a lot more interesting tonight. Combination. I would order this at a restaurant. It's lovely. I uh, lived in Italy for three years and uh, love the combination there with the, the basil, uh, the roast peppers, uh, and the prosciutto wrapped around the fish, which I didn't actually think would go too well with it, but uh, it was just beautiful. But there are a few guests who don't eat fish, so they haven't had anything to eat at all yet. <laughs> and that's not the only problem. There is here on my tomato. Oh. I don't think I'll be eating that. <laughs> oh, I'm really, really, really disappointed in this dish. There's too much juice going on. I've never done it like this before, and I'm uh, not a practice dish. <laughs> Stupid. I just, uh, I think the tape is back to the chef. It's actually uh, here on the tomato there, so I'm quite disappointed. Okay, thank you. I'll take that away for you. I'm kicking myself now. The rush to get that second course out has showed up as mistakes on the plate. Now the pressure's on to make it up to them. I don't want to coat it too much. And, yeah. and so to the main. Oh. Yeah, let's rock and roll, guys. That's what we're looking for. If this chicken doesn't fill them up, nothing will. Doing good, guys. Doing good. Roast chicken with manchego stuffing, mash, Madeira jus, and a Caesar salad. Oh. Awesome. Oh, you don't like that as well, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the smell is beautiful. 
and it's an impressive master chef dish. Yeah, I don't know where to begin, it's just an amazing dish. So many nice tastes and something I've never really had before. It's absolutely amazing, he's definitely um, picked up the standard a bit from the from the last course. Fantastic, beautiful, succulent, really succulent chicken, it just melts in your mouth. Are we halfway through that stack of plates yet? Probably not, right? I'm really happy with this chicken dish, this is how I envisage it. A little Caesar salad on the side, the stuffing, the sauce, that creamy mash, I'm happy with this dish. His cooking is superb, thankfully because the swimming's not so great. All right, so uh, this makes up for it by far. It's fantastic. One more plate up and we're finito, guys. Just the dessert to go. In there like that. So I've got the apples that we actually picked off the tree. We've got the caramel sauce around the outside and the lids are going on now. We're going to fill those with the apple brose. This is cream, honey, oats and whiskey. Okay, ice cream just on top. That's it. If this doesn't finish them off, nothing will. What do you reckon, team? I'd love to sit down and eat this. I'm hoping my friends in the dining room can do justice to my DI apple pie. We're really going to have to unbutton the belt here, I think. <laughs> I love apple pie, and so I'm looking forward to trying it. It's a real police sized portion. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Everything's beautiful. I haven't, haven't not liked anything on there so far, so yeah, it's really, really good. Have you had any feedback from the policemen? The policemen are loving it, Simon. Yeah? They're having to loosen their belts a wee bit. That's what I like to hear. Have a look. Welcome to my happy place. <laughs> he deserves a medal. Yeah, he deserves a medal, really. Well, you never know until you really hear the feedback from them, but I'm hoping that we've delivered a meal that will live up to their graduation day, and hopefully we've really given them that extra 5% magic onto the plate. I'm just full. <laughs> that was a lot to eat. <laughs> Takes a lot of work to keep my figure. <laughs> All of the meals actually were fantastic. Um, <laughs> definitely a master chef to me. The pie. Right. Absolutely awesome. Reynolds, here you go. You can have this. I don't think I can handle that. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I know you can. Well, a big pie for a big guy. <laughs> They're all smiling, which is good to see, and I owe a great deal to the team in the kitchen. Well, I really want to say thank you for having me. Being at the Royal New Zealand Police College has been incredible. Love to all the other team. Thanks for having us. Now I've got to go and find out whether they liked it. It's time for my verdict, but can I stay on the right side of the law? It's been a really interesting experience having you here. All right, it's been a great time. All right, I hope you've enjoyed it. OK, as a, as a chef, right, it's definitely a, a 10 from me. OK, as a uh, future cop in these guys' places, I'd say definitely a, a seven. He's oh. being nice, isn't he? It's been great having you here. So, for you guys, what do you think? Yeah. It's fair to say I got out of jail and I'm home free. So thanks for having me. Nice. Thanks. It was a huge day today as the 266 wing graduated. I hope I delivered them a dinner that they'll never forget. I've had an amazing time here. It's enlightened me into what really the police is about as people looking after our community. It's days I'll never ever forget in my life, but one thing I can assure you, having been here, is that the people that we have now to look after us and our community are great people and we're in good hands. Next time on Chef on a Mission. That was one of the best things I've ever had there. I'm off to Samoa. It sprung a leak, but it's no holiday. I sure as hell hope I can cook one, otherwise I'm in deep trouble. Because back home in Auckland, there's 300 hungry guests to feed. 56, not cooked enough. It's a Samoan wedding, and this parlangi needs to cook a feast worthy of the big day. Come on, come on, hurry up. <laughs> <laughs>